is for this flyweight championship in Mills Lane with a final instruction to uh, a little more breach than Bill and says, let's just get it on. The tail of the tape shows 20-year-old Orlando Canizales, the shorter of the two men, coming in right at the limit, 112. Gonzalez, 111 and a half, standing 5, 7 and a half, and that's why uh, he feels that he is capable of going for six titles from 108 pounds to 126 in his pro career. We'll find out. Round number one. This is scheduled for 12 rounds. NADF title at stake. Gonzalez in gold, and Canizales in the red trunk. watching Canizales in the gymnasium he seems to pull his left shoulder back and he's a little too square which leaves him a wide open target for a good snapping gear which Gonzalez has one thing we know for sure is uh, two fine professionals fighting for a title should be they're in outstanding shape good combination by Gonzalez and Canizales has an unusual routine employing some new methods new to boxing and uh, we watched him in the gym in Carson City this week and uh, boy he is just in superb condition work hard for an hour at a time and not be breathing with any difficulty. See again, how his stamina holds up here in the real thing. Again, Tim, we, we're, the kids are fighting at over 6,000 feet altitude, which is uh, really tough on his stamina. Gonzalez from Los Angeles, California, his fifth professional bout. The Olympic gold medalist in the Los Angeles Games 1984, Orlando Canizales from Laredo, Texas, his brother Gabby working the corner toward that big upset of Richie Sandoval, a fifth round knockout to win the WBA title and then lost it in his first event to Bernardo Pinango. Gabby working the corner of his brother Orlando today, under a minute to go in round one. Tim, it's really a pleasure watching these flyweights. You really see some good boxing. Quick move. Good right hand by Canizales, right on the chin. But good reflexes, quick moves, well-conditioned kids. They're not just flopping around in that ring the way you see some of these big fellas do. Solid jab by Gonzalez starting to connect here in the latter moment of round number one. Tim, Canizales is going to have to land a big punch because he's going to be eating those jabs all fight long. Stands too square. Under the 30-second mark we go. It's an interesting aspect of his style because his brother Gabby, one of the things we remarked about in that Sandoval fight was uh, how well he gave him angles looking a lot like Roberto Duran. Well, if you notice, Orlando, he has his left shoulder pulled back behind his right shoulder. Final seconds now of round number one scheduled for 12. This is round number two, and a uh, clever move in the corner of Orlando Canizales. They had an umbrella up to shade him from the sun, which is quite intense here this afternoon. It is now just after 2 o'clock Pacific Coast time. Tim Ryan and Gilplant are watching Orlando Canizales in red. The NABF champion Paul Gonzalez in gold. Canizales to elude that flurry from Gonzalez, only one of the punches landed. Landed effectively, though, Tim. He knew he was hit. Nomination scored by the champion. Canizales has to stay low, try to slip that jab and counter. That was uh, what we were watching. Jesse Reed uh, worked with him in the gym this past week, trying to get him to stay low, bend his knees. Solid right by Gonzalez to the ear of Canadella. And a lot of people think when the shorter fighter is fighting a tall man, that he, he has to stand up to reach him. Exactly the opposite. He stands up, he's a target. 
It's got to get even lower. Oh, there's a solid right that staggered Canizales in some difficulty here in round two. Look at the bounce. Dollars working to the body up to the head. And step straight back, Jim. That's when you can get nailed. Just go out to the side. That's something we observed in the Songbo fight as well. And again, uh, we should all be reminded this is just his fifth professional bout. And we talked about what amazing poise that he has shown early in this professional career. Under a minute to go, round number two. Canazales yeah. yeah. is too square a target. He should be showing Gonzalez his size instead of showing him his skin. Under the 30 second mark we go. Work, 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 work. Work, work, work. Hold my hand. Kenneth Ellis has been moving well these last few minutes, but he hasn't landed any punches. Now he comes off the rope, but Gonzalez escapes easily. Coming to the end of round number two. Round number three. Should be pointed out, there's also an umbrella in the corner of the champion Paul Gonzalez here to protect against the sun. Right hand counter from Gonzalez. That's exactly what Al Sankey told him to do. He said, when he throws it right here, throw one right back. And he did, and he nailed Canizales. Round three scheduled for 12. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy live from Caesars Lake Tahoe on a beautiful sunny afternoon. Light breeze blowing. Canizales can't make up his mind whether he's a southpaw or an orthodox fighter. He's standing square. Another good counter from the champion scoring. Oh, big right hand by Kenneth Allison. Gonzalez is down. Popped up immediately. But a big right hand from Orlando Kenneth Ellis. Bill Blaine gives him a count to check the eyes. Well, Allison said that's what he had to do, nail him with the big punch, and he did. Kenneth Ellis now trying to catch up to Gonzalez is in retreat. Good left hand. by Kenneth Ellis. And another good right hand by Kenneth Ellis. We'll see about the Olympic part of Paul Gonzalez now, Jim. Gonzalez pressing his advantage here. He's got Gonzalez backing up. Lands another right-hand lead. We're in round number three. The champion has been down. And Jim Gonzalez seems to have found the ring. Now Gonzalez grabbing and spinning him around. That buys him a little bit of time and a chance to retain his composure. Now he's punching back. There's another left scored by Gonzalez. And another, an uppercut. Gonzalez is going to have to nail Gonzalez now, Tim. Because he's just keying off on him. He's got to get his respect back. Another right here by Gonzalez. Under a minute to go in round number three. Canada Dallas with much more confidence walking in now. And Dallas unable to back him up. Right hand lead. They're going to see off him. And Dallas has to stand his ground and nail him. And here. Al Sankey, the manager and trainer of Paul Gonzalez, telling his champion that Canada Dallas is tired. Under 30 seconds to go. Looks like he's still got some dip. He's thrown a lot of punches, as Canizales, and two effects. Gonzalez trying to get it back together, but not much dip on his punches. Final seconds of round number three. A knockdown scored by Canizales in this round. In the corner of Paul Gonzalez, Al Sankey trying to rally his man. Let's go back and see the knockdown. Here we have the taller man, Gonzalez. And there, 
Canizales got very, very low. He came up and hit him on the chin with a right hand, which is what he should have been doing. Stay low. Perfectly delivered punch. Here we go. See again. Here he went low. He's low. Bang on the chin. So the knockdown scored by the challenger, Orlando Canizales, and they're working on Paul Gonzalez in the corner, who's finished the uh, round reasonably strong, but just didn't uh, appear to have the same sting in his punches he showed in the first couple of rounds. Well, Tim, that knockdown seems to have taken a lot out of him. He, he lost all the sting and all his composure after the knockdown. Round up four upcoming. Bill Lane waiting for the bell to ring. Orlando Canizales got to feel pretty good about developments in round number three. Undefeated. Paul Gonzalez in four bouts, all went the distance. Hannah Dallas undefeated in 12 fights with one draw, 11 victories, and nine KOs in those 11 victories. So we know he has punching power. Now some more movement and bounce from Hannah Dallas. Patient work by Paul Gonzalez here in round number four. Canizales is very, very quick on his feet. Moves out, moves in quickly. Let's see little guys, they're fast. Good defensive work by Canizales, all the last jab got through from the champion. Good solid jab by the champion, Gonzalez. A reminder that still ahead, our same-day coverage of the Tour de France continues. Today's key climbing race in the Alps. America's Greg Lamone had his finest moment. You'll be seeing that upcoming after the fight here on CBS Sports Sunday. This is round number four of this 12-round NABF flyweight title fight. Good combination scored by the champion. And Gonzalez is working that jab all the time now, Tim, trying to keep Canizales off balance. There it is again. Good. There's two more snappy jabs. Canizales just seems to eat the jab. We, I mentioned that his brother reminded us of Roberto Duran when, when he won the championship. This kid looks a lot like Roberto Duran, too. He's got those quick tiger moves, steps in quickly. Good right hand by Canizales. Uppercut scored by Gonzalez on the return, and a right hand by the champion. Gabby credits his brother Orlando with helping him to prepare when he took the title from Sandoval. He had some real wars sparring. Well, they say they don't ever want to fight for, uh, fight for real. They really go at it in their sparring session. Under a minute to go. Good left hook by Canizales. Him, he cuts beautifully. Look at these beautiful moves by both of these fighters, side to side. These are the things that the boxing fans should look for. Stepping to the right, move, moving back to the left, coming in, blocking punches. That's what boxing's all about. Coming to the end of round number four of the scheduled 12 round bout for the NABF title. Round number five, Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy live from Lake Tahoe. Paul Gonzalez, who was knocked down in round number three, rallying in the fourth round. We gave him that round on our scorecard. Orlando Canizales in red, the challenger. Tim, again, it's up to Canizales to land the big punch because he certainly can't outbox Paul Gonzalez. Good and start by the champion in this round number five. And Tim, in Gonzalez, uh, Canizales' corner, excuse me, they were very, very smart. Jesse Reed does a good job. Has an umbrella over keeping him in the shade, and he's using a nice ice-cold towel to keep him cool because these kids are fighting under tough conditions in this heat. And he had a towel on his feet as well. It's also good thinking. And in the Gonzalez corner, they had a nice bag on the head of the champion, Gonzalez. So uh, some experienced and capable cornermen, Al Stanky, in control in the Paul Gonzalez corner. The young man who uh, discovered Gonzalez as a youngster on the streets of Los Angeles. Saw him all the way through to a gold medal performance in the 1984 Olympics. Most outstanding boxer award. Fifth fight as a professional. Right hand by the champion, but he didn't move Kenna Dallas. Instead, he brought him back. Good left by Kenna Dallas. Big left hook. That's when he gets low and bobs and weaves. And count the punches those jabs. That's what he has to do. 
There's a good combination by Gonzalez, snapping back ahead of Kenna Dallas. And that was a lightning combination, four-punch combination. Well, those days in the gym against big brother Gabby, the Bantamweight, will certainly stand Orlando well in this bout. He's taking some shots now from Paul Gonzalez. It's another combination. He is dangerous, though, Tim. A lot of snapping those punches. But again, he can't stay outside. To move that head, slip underneath, and count the punch. Good combination. Under and over by the champion. Under a minute to go in round number five. If you just joined us, Anna Dallas had the champion Paul Gonzalez down in round number three. But apart from that, Gonzalez has been in control. And as, as this fight wears on, the, the, the heat is going to slow both of these guys up, and we're going to see a lot of tough exchanges in the fight as long as it goes. And you mentioned the canvas, the uh, ring surface being somewhat slow, so that that will also contribute to bringing uh, some head-to-head -head encounters. Another 30 seconds we go in round number five. Both fighters trained at altitude to prepare for the 6,200-foot Lake Tahoe setting. Both fighters scoring, but Gonzalez getting the better of it. Round number six, Tim Bryan and Gil Clancy watching Anna Dallas come flying off the stool at the champion, Gonzalez. Well, we mentioned what kind of shape uh, they're both in, but Anna Dallas in particular was very impressive in his training, using some new methods, training and road work and little different things that uh, are new to the boxing business, and uh, he's definitely in great physical condition. Tim, he can get in and out very, very quickly. Pace quickening here in round number six. Get him up. Come on, keep him up. Low blow warning to Gonzalez, but what a beautiful series of punches he threw. Push that thing back. There, there was that right hand again, Tim. Just missed. Would have been another knockdown. Beautiful counter over the jab by Canada Allen. Again, he's facing Paul Gonzalez. As he, the left shoulder behind the right shoulder. You know, Paul Gonzalez did not expect an easy fight. He didn't expect him in any of his first four full bouts. He's taken out experienced guys. Won them all by a decision, including the title. North American Boxing Federation crown against Alonzo Strongbow, much more experienced fighter. And he's in tough again today, as we see here in round number six. Scheduled for 12. Anna Dallas, 11-0-1 with nine knockouts, 20 years of age. He is younger than Gonzalez. Remember, Gonzalez lost a whole year after the Olympics because of his broken hand, suffered in the Olympic Games. He was unable to start as a professional as quickly as his teammates did. Well, Tim, he's certainly catching up in a hurry. Already the NABF champion and looking for a world championship fight in the near future. Under a minute to go, round six. Yeah. Yeah. Dallas seems to go through phases where he dances in and out, but he doesn't throw punches. Well, he lo seems to lose his concentration, Tim. Goes like a house of fire for a while and then just stands outside and lets Gonzalez pick away at him for a while. 30 seconds we go in round six. Canada's Alice is starting to look a little weary to me, Tim. Well, it's different when you're actually in a fight, taking blows and in the heat this afternoon than it is in the, in the gymnasium preparing for the bout, as well-conditioned as he clearly is coming into this bout. Final seconds, round six. To all the Sierra Mountains. We're at Lake Tahoe, Caesar's Tahoe, with Orlando Canadales getting quite a tongue lashing from the trainer Jesse Reed between rounds, saying, you want the title, you want the belt, you got to go back up this guy. But 
see if he's able to do it here in round number seven. He knocked down Gonzalez back in round three, but otherwise, as we have viewed it, Gonzalez has had his own way. Well, Jesse Reed sure did light a fire under him. He said he had to back him up, and we thought that's the way he was going to fight him from the beginning. Perhaps the most impressive thing about Gonzalez in his title-winning effort against Strongbow is the, the fact that when Strongbow started to rough him up, pressure him, he stood there and slugged back with him in those middle rounds. And more effective than Strongbow. Now we have Orlando boxing as a southpaw. And he's just rocked back by a right hand from Gonzalez. Once they start switching around like that, then they're starting to lose confidence. He doesn't know which way he wants to fight now. Another right hand by the champion. Domination bouncing off the head of the challenger, Kenneth Ellis. Tim, do you notice he can't make up his mind which, which hand he wants to lead first, and he's wide open. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hurting him because he's exactly squared up, as you pointed out earlier in the fight. And we notice that in the gym. It's very, very peculiar style. Yet to lose as a professional, 11-0-1. Tim, that big punch, it, it makes a difference with him. Nine knockouts, I guess he hits these guys on the chin and they don't get up. Gonzalez got up. That's Boy, the he got up right away. Bounced right back up. And as you notice, Gonzalez is starting to set a little more now, Tim. The, the footwork is slowing down. There's a little more, little more power in the punches. He's just standing there now, Gonzalez. Waiting to nail Canada did with that right hand under a minute to go round seven Dallas uh, terrific concentration another trait that we noted right through his amateur career no matter what happened around him he's got his eyes right on the target at all times it's amazing Jesse Lee lit a fire under Orlando but it only lasted about 20 seconds then he went back into his trance Beautiful boxing, and now a little blood from the nose of Hannah Dallas. He's been peppered in that target area by lefts and rights from the champion. But Tim, the thing that makes this interesting, though, is any time Orlando can land a big punch and get him back in the fight, which he's already proven in this fight. Coming to the end now, round number seven. Who sells more home? And Gil Clancy watching the NABF flyweight title fight. Paul Gonzalez in goal, defending his crown against Orlando Canizales. And the challenger Canizales had the champion down in round number three. But uh, since that time, the champion Paul Gonzalez has taken control with some beautiful boxing in just his fifth professional bout. The thing is, they, Jesse Reed told Orlando to back up Paul Gonzalez, but he's not trying to back him up, Tim. He's trying to outsmart him, which is a, kind of a tough job against a master boxer like Gonzalez. <laughs> Gonzalez has hit uh, Orlando Gonzalez with some good solid shots, Tim, but he doesn't seem to move him. He doesn't seem to wobble him. He takes a great punch. But the other way around, if Orlando is the big one, we may get a little reaction. But he's not fighting the kind of fight that Jesse Reed wants us to fight. Not at all. Scoring will be done by three judges at ringside. Benny Delgado from Los Angeles, Doug Tucker and Keith McDonald, both from Carson City, down the mountain from Lake Tahoe. And Gonzalez with combination, keeping Canizales at bay. Gonzalez is expending a lot of energy, though, Tim. Right hand by the champion. Right on the button, Tim, but nothing happens. A low blow by the champion, and Mills Lane, the referee, with a warning. That might have taken a point. I'm not sure. We'll wait till the end of the round. No, nah, Tim, I don't think so. It was right on the borderline. It would be kind of tough to take a point away for that point. They gave him a warning, and <laughs> it was either a low blow um, or it wasn't. But what you do is you apologize after the round, <laughs> and then they don't take the point away from you. Dennis Alice just can't seem to get 
close to Gonzalez at all. But Ken, the way he the way he stands, he, when he flips the punch, he still isn't in punching range. That's his problem. Get that left foot forward and flip the jab, he'll be able to hit him with the hook. Under 30 seconds to go in round eight. Look at that combination, Tim. When Beautiful. did you ever see a better one? He's an artist, this youngster, 22 years of age. Coming to the end of round number eight. 112 pounds, the North American title at stake. And Gonzalez on our card, well ahead. And Gonzalez will need a knockout to pull this out. He has a knockout in round three of the champion Gonzalez, but has not been close since. Coming up next, following our fight, here on CBS Sports Sunday, more coverage, same day coverage of the Tour de France. When Canizella slips, is the time he should be punching, but when he slips, he doesn't punch. He's trying to hit Paul with lead. That's kind of tough to do against a big, tall, quick guy like Paul Gonzalez. Now, Gonzalez, as we have mentioned a couple of times, talking about as many as six titles from 108 to 126 pounds. Uh, Gil, I know it's a little early to tell, but you think physically, uh, size-wise, and, and his boxing skills, has he got a chance to do that? Uh, no, Tim. Realistically, I don't think so. Good combination. Matter of fact, Tim, let him win this fight first. He's just got hit with some real good, solid punches by Orlando Gonzalez, and he hasn't won the first title yet. Let's take one at a time. Well, that's him talking. Well, I'm not proposing it for him. <laughs> it was his notion. I thought you were his attorney. Not at all. In fact, I question whether he can go down to 108. That's what uh, he's talking about doing. That would be ridiculous. Young kid, you let them grow, Tim. We are in the ninth round of the scheduled 12 rounder. Gonzalez with a, just a real steady pace throughout the fight. With the exception of the third round in which he had to retreat after the knockdown. He has kept up this pace. Combination painting the face of Santa Dallas like that. Tim, but all of Paul Gonzalez's punches are arm punches. He hasn't moved Canizales for any one big punch since the fight started. I think his notion going in and talking with Al Stanky is to pile up those points. They figured they could outbox him and win easily on points. If a knockdown opportunity, knockout opportunity came, of course, they'd take it. But uh, I think he's content to uh, win this way. We well, Orlando just can't make up his mind which way he wants to stand, Tim. It's a terrible handicap to be uh, going around the ring with your feet even instead of one foot in front of the other. Got in a left hand on that flurry as we approach the end of round number nine. Well, it's very unusually warm for this mountain country, but of course it's unusually warm over most of America, and it has now reached the west. Anna Dallas comes out with some fire here, I'm sure Jesse Reed, saying you better go out and knock him out. You had him down in round three, your only shot at winning this is with a knockout. Tim, another remarkable performance by two young kids. Fighting at this pace in a 100 degree temperature, I can't remember a, a clinch in a fight. Very similar to Barry McGuigan and Stevie Cruz when they fought in a 110 degree temperature. These kids are in super condition. Gonzalez, as we pointed out, has had a very steady pace of punching. He hasn't rested at all. Now he's complaining about a little collision there, catching a, a headbutt, and Mills, he, and a cut has been open. Unintentional butt, Mills Lane tells the judges, unintentional, but there is a gash open over the right eye of the champion Gonzalez, and that could turn things around. It's right at the corner of the right eye of the champion Gonzalez. Another first experience in his pro career. You know, Tim, it's a remarkable thing about the psychological aspects of boxing. You can see a fighter, he can look dead tired, he can look badly beaten. All of a sudden, the other guy starts to bleed, and the adrenaline flows, and it's like he's fresh as a daisy. That's all psychological. Well, Gonzalez has definitely started to go backwards since the cut. Canadella so far has been unable to take advantage of it. It came from an unintentional butt, according to referee Mills Lane. 
That was a good call, Tim. It was. Both both guys moved in, and the heads just happened to bang. But meanwhile, Paul Gonzalez, whom we have well in control on our unofficial scorecard, now faced with a new problem. And still lots of time left in this bout. We're in round 10, scheduled for 12, remember, under the NADF rules. Domination by the champion. Gonzalez, a good right hand, and he backs up Ken Adela. Under a minute to go. Round 10. And Ken Adela's in some trouble. Punches back, but Gonzalez landing heavily here. Ken Adela just shook his head to clear his head, Tim. There's that Olympic champion's heart coming out. That's what makes champions. Now he's showing a little footwork side to side. Lateral movement. Left hand scored by Ken Adela's. Lunging in with that left to sell short. Under the 32nd mark we go. Paul looks a little tired right now, Tim. He's going to have to suck it up. Right hand lead scored, and blood now all over the face of the champion, Gonzalez. So far, not impeding his eyesight. Right hand scored by Canizales. Just Tim, missed with that one. That was the go-home shot right there. Coming to the end of round number 10. Immediately, he knew that he had suffered a cut. Now we're live here in round number 11. Canizales is going all out with the home run ball, Tim. Throwing him from left field. Well, we scored that 10th round for Canizales in the knockdown round in round number three. But otherwise, on our card, we've got Canizales with every other round. So Canizales knows he's got to keep up the pressure. Got to take advantage of the cut at the corner of the right eye of the champion. Just below the eyebrow, on the eyelid, it appears. Well, Tim, they've, they've done a good job of stopping the cut in the corner. Very, very little blood coming out now. And Paul Gonzalez looks poised at the moment. Good snapping jab. Well, that jab has been most effective in keeping Canadales away from him most of the fight. It seems to me if you use a, a one-two combination, Tim, a little more often it hits it hits uh, Orlando right on the chin with the right hand because, again, the jab sets up the right hand. And with Orlando Canizales footwork and style, he's wide open for the right hand, right down the pipe. But again, he got hit on the chin in the third round, and sometimes you're a little hesitant to throw the punch, so you let yourself open a little bit. Round 11 scheduled for 12 under the NABF rules for this flyweight title at 112 pounds. Tim Orlando with Joe Clancy, live from beautiful Lake Tahoe. On a hot afternoon in the Rockies. Solid shot to the body by Canada Dallas, and that's something that he has not done very much of through the course of the fight, mainly because he hasn't been able to get close enough. I would have thought that would be part of his game plan to work the body of the taller Gonzalez. Well, Tim, he's not pressing the action against Gonzalez now. He's moving around and moving away. Again, exactly the opposite of what Jesse Reed wants him to do. He's still quick, though. Very quick. Well, and I'm sure thinking he can There's land that right over. hand. There's that right hand after the jab, Tim. And a left hook from the champion. Now he's Another one, too. Keep Canizales off. And there's 30 seconds to go to keep the fight in perspective despite the blood on the face of the champion. He's had his way throughout this bout except for round number three. One big shot by Canadala sent the champion down and he spent the rest of the round in retreat. Otherwise, he's been in command. Coming to the end of round 11. And here at Lake Tahoe, Canizales in red, the challenger. Paul Gonzalez, the champion in gold. The cut having been no problem, but there are still three minutes remaining. It came from a butt in round number 10, an unintentional butt. Good right hand by Canizales. Tim right on the chin. That's his only chance as we see it is to dispatch the champion with a knockout. Tim, he starts off every round like a house of fire. I think he's afraid of Jesse Reed. He runs out into the center <laughs> of the ring. But after the first 15, 20 seconds, he reverts to trying to outsmart uh, Paul, which is just about an impossible job against the master boxer. 
Gifted Paul Gonzalez at 22 years of age, his fifth professional bout. Some got it, some ain't. An old expression. And this young man has those boxing skills that were inborn. And again, we've talked about the poise he has as a young professional. We saw it after the butt, in which he kept his composure, got himself right back together, didn't let the cut bother him. His first experience as a professional with that cut. This, he, can, he can throw those one-twos all night, Paul Gonzalez. Throw as many points as he wants to score. see any definite strategy from Orlando Canizales. What is he trying to do, Tim? He's trying, he's trying to hit a ghost is what he's trying to do. The will of the wisp. He has uh, proven his uh, conditioning program, provided him with the stamina to go 12 rounds at 100 degrees, but you still have to uh, have that boxing ability and punching ability. Looks like he's just hoping that home run ball would land. Well, it did land, Tim, the one time, but he only hit a triple. <laughs> Under a minute to go in the final round. And there was a case of Paul Gonzalez out punching the puncher. Gonzalez finishing here with beautiful combinations. Rocking back that head of Canizales with 30 seconds left in the fight. There's a class fighter, Tim, finishing like a champion. Superb concentration, Gonzalez keeping his eye on the target, staying right there. The Olympic gold medalist, North American professional champion at 112 pounds, winding up this fight in grand style. Gonzalez goes down, but that is not a knockdown. But Gonzalez showed a little muscle there, too. He swung him down, and the bell goes, ending this 12-round flyweight fight and a standing ovation for the performance of the champion Paul Gonzalez and his opponent Orlando Canizales. Now remember, still the Kaplan is ready with the decision. We understand that uh, he does have a problem with a microphone, but we'll be able to hear Bill without it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. I will read the scores. Judgment Delgado, 117-110. is the final event of the night. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC.